Uh, always, man. I'm a fan. Y'all got, yeah, y'all got me interested in football now, man. Shout out to you and Jeff. Um, those Thank were you. some dope. Those were some dope points that uh, Jeff made about uh, the Brooklyn Nets. I, I agree with almost everything, but what I will say is, I believe that I don't think free agents should come to the team and take minutes from guys that was there the season prior. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't want to see T.J. Warren to be the sixth man. Essentially, I would like to see him be in the rotation. Yeah, but not the sixth man. Um, Cam Thomas played 67 games out of 82 last season. The only reason why that happened is because he didn't start. He only had two starts out of those 67 games. But that was strategic, like a Ginobili or a Lemon Pepper Lou. Um, but I said that to say he had a little injury that he had got when he was playing versus the Celtics. And that's why he didn't play more than 67 games. And uh, I think he should be the sixth man or um, just try to build on the cohesiveness and chemistry of the players that were there a season before opposed to just implementing the new players and making them, you know, kind of, I don't know, as vital as uh, like as much as I like uh, Royce O'Neal in the lineup. I don't know if he should take Joe Harris spot. You feel what I'm saying? I want to see Nash be a fourth-year coach and not have no excuses on why he can't fit everybody in the rotation. He should have enough experience from uh, his tenor, which is only three years. It's going to the fourth year. But that's enough experience for him to say, okay, I know who to start and I know who to sub. And I need Nash also to keep the same starting lineup. Stop changing the starting lineups. If these guys are playing well, let them play well. Mm-hmm. Um, Dayron Sharp deserved more minutes. He got his minutes and time cut because of James Johnson last season. Um, mm-hmm. Dayron Sharp deserved more minutes than did James Johnson. You see, we cut James Johnson. Kessler Edwards, he's another one who deserved minutes in the playoffs that didn't get it. So, again, I feel like the whole thing with KD and asking Nash and uh, Marks to get fired was because him – and Nash wasn't on the same page communicating about how to win. It was just, you know, I'm obligated to do this. You obligated to do that. You do your job. I do my job. That don't win championships. You got to be cohesive. The superstar has to be cohesive with the the, the coach, the head coach, the same way Phil Jack was with a, a, a Michael Jordan or, or, or Kobe Bryant or, or Pat Riley with the Lakers and et cetera and so on. Um, I'm, I'm saying a lot. I'm just trying to say, say a lot before I, I go. What, what I wanted to add to that is what people don't realize is that Joe Sy sought out Markeith Morris. Joe Sy yeah. so, sought out Markeith Morris for, for one vital reason, and that's for toughness, uh, mental toughness, and uh, a sense of, you know, we could we can do this. And, you know, just that veteran presence. And I think it's, very, it's vital that we got that because KD asked for the trade. So, yeah, I imagine, you know, KD back and everything is going to get back to normal. But I imagine it didn't go over well with the, with the young guys or a lot of people on the team. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, mm-hmm. damn. You know what I mean? So with adding a Marquise Morris, who, again, Joe Sy sought out. Joe Sy made it important for Marquise Morris to be on the Brooklyn Nets. And I think Morris brings that that um don't give up, that uh kind of, if y'all remember Jared Dudley, he's kind of going to be like a vocal leader. Yeah, and I think yeah. That's we the, remember Jared Dudley, all right, when he got into uh, <laughs> Joel Embiid's face and Ben Simmons. Oh, that was a beautiful thing. Right, right, right. But the, the whole vocal leader part of it, I think that's what the Brooklyn Nets, um, when KD asked for that trade request, that kind of helped, that hurt KD's vocal leadership. And with Marquise Morris coming on board, I think that puts us right back to where we were as far as leadership but again it's going to take games it's going to take time spent right. together practices uh um extra workouts perhaps and just you know winning and losing together and playing together and saying all right well we lost together we're going to go back at it next game and we're going to win all we want together let's keep up the good work case in point is that whole sense of togetherness and i'm not giving up on y'all i'm not and and again the winning championship teams have teammates for more than one or two years you're right we can't we can't break up this group because we lost. Look, at if that's the case, we were in the had Golden State doing what they did. They didn't win as soon as Clay, Dre, and Steph was together. Um, same thing. Well, look at Giannis. That's a great example. Look at Giannis and Middleton. You know, mm-hmm. they didn't They didn't win until they added Drew Holiday. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But my and point is Lopez. they didn't. Yeah. And, and to, to add to that, they didn't break them up. Like, okay, Middleton and Giannis don't work. 
let's break them up. No, you add another piece to that. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? So I think that's what the Brooklyn Nets need to take a page out of these championship team book to say, don't break up our players. I'm glad Cam Thomas did not get traded. He, I heard him in a, I heard others of him getting traded, but I'm saying, and this is my unpopular opinion, when KD and Kyrie, and I think everybody should come on this show and have their own unpopular opinion out of respect for the show, unpopular opinion. My unpopular opinion is Cam Thomas, they're going to sign him in that rookie extension. Look for him to have a contract like a, a Garland or, or, or something like that because KD and his latter part of his career – and Kyrie, and this is stuff that I, I have logged the other day because I read articles about Cam Thomas explaining his relationship with Kyrie Irving and KD and how he felt blessed and, and special because they took time out to work with him and teach him and, and, and kind of like, you know, throw him under the wing. And, yeah, and he was. That post you put on Twitter, yeah, about um, Cam yeah. Thomas and um, Kevin Durant. Yeah. 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 And I just think that, that part which is not happening on the basketball court, goes a long way with young guys coming into the league. You know, he's a 27 pick. Let's call Cam Thomas what he is. He's, he's, he'll be, he's, he'll be 21 in October. I know his yeah. birthday. His birthday like October 13th or some shit. Like, People forget that, that he's only 21 years old. He's still got no, a lot of room to grow in this right, league. No, he's, he's 20. He'll be 21. That's, that's scary. You got to think about that. And the kid has got so much talent. I'm glad you brought up that point, too. I really am. That was an excellent point that you made about uh, Cam Thomas. That I do believe I do believe he's going to be a guy that the Nets are going – and when I when you know, I made the point about uh, T.J. Warren being the yeah. sixth man, I said he could be a sixth man Can't, because I've got to see what Tam, Cam Thomas can do, not just because of his scoring, but for the mm. rest of his game. He's got to improve in the rest of his game if he also is going to get consistent minutes on the floor because he can go out there and light it up on the scoreboard. But when it comes to it, he got to be able to play better defense because he got exposed on defense. Let's be real. Cam Thomas was not good on the defensive side of the court. He got beaten a lot, and teams would look at him to exploit him. If he can improve that part of his game, Cam Thomas will be a guy that, like you said, he's going to be a guy that the Nets are going to put out there on the court a lot more. And I could see him being getting extended when Kevin Durant gets a little bit older and he needs to like have some of that workload taken off his shoulder and you can put it on a guy like Cam Thomas as he grows. So I, I I fully love that point that you said about Cam Thomas and you're right about that relationship that he has with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and that those two guys are pretty much taking Cam Thomas under the wing because they see how talented this young kid from LSU is and they want to try to do everything they can to help get the, the every single little drop of talent out of this kid because they know how vital he could be to the net success going into the season. Yeah, this last um, part I'll say real quick. I, um, uh, shout out to Cougar, Tamer, Zach Wilson. Um, I appreciate you arriving and joining. Um, uh, if you could take the time to hit the like uh, and subscribe button, man, I really appreciate that, man. Thanks for joining into the stream. Um, go ahead, Breezy. Yeah, no, no, I, was, I was just saying two, two things. Um, the, another article I read, he in the same article actually, it's just another part of it. He explained that, you know, he just want to keep working on, and this is to Jeff's point, he want to keep working on what the coach asked him to work on, and that's his defense and him being a playmaker. Um, so he is coachable, you know what I mean? And they also explained that, and, and this is, when I say they, I mean Sean Marks, this is his quote. He said, yo, you know, I like his work ethic. He's, he's always at the gym, you know what I mean? And I think that's the the pedigree of being a great player in, this, in the NBA, in this league. Is, is putting in the work because everybody talented. You know, these are the best basketball players in the world. And what's and this is what Kobe, I'm getting this quote from Kobe Bryant. He said, the reason why I was so much better is because I worked harder. And he just talked about his regimen and how he woke up and what he did from waking up before practice started mm -hmm. with the NBA. He had his own practice and he always felt like we could be equally talented, but I'm an outwork. And I see that in the Ken Thomas and I hope and hopefully the Brooklyn Nets organization develop him and the other three rookies or second year guys because I like the coach. I like them as teammates. And you know, and that's what I'm learning about basketball as too. It's not so much always about who's the best player. It's about how well do teammates play alongside one another. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Exactly, One thousand percent. That's why I was saying uh earlier 
this Brooklyn Nets team has the right mix of players. You mm-hmm. have your shooters. You have your def- you have solid, tough guys. You know what I'm saying? You have a glue guy like Marquise Morris. Somebody's going to get in the guy's face and check some of these uh, players. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, you have, you know, you have uh, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. You have scoring. You have wing defense with Ben Simmons out there. You know what I'm saying? He can also rebound and score the ball. So you have, I think you have the best mix of players that this Brooklyn Nets team has had, you know, since um, I would say uh, Dinwiddie in there. You know what I mean? So um, that's going to elevate or not elevate, but take the pressure off guys like KD, Kyrie, Ben Simmons, Joe Harris, you know, they both coming back from injury. Um, so you got to understand that it's not just about Kyrie and KD. You know what I'm saying? That's a casual basketball fan's take. We all mm-hmm. know it's the glue guys that carry you to championships. 